and welcome to The Crimson Stitchery, a video channel about making all things that are beautiful and useful. My name is Anushka and you can find me elsewhere online as a sour telling, that's a sour telling, and that's my username on Instagram and on Ravelry too, where we also have a Ravelry group. So if you haven't joined in already, do hop over there, become a member and introduce yourself. There's lots of really lovely people there. Um, it's currently very, very active, I'm delighted to say. It's full of really wonderful people who are just so encouraging and there's a range of discussion topics, whether you just want to have your say about something or if you've got a question and are looking for some advice um, or if you want to join in on any of the knit-alongs that are currently going on with the Crimson Stitchery. So welcome to my Rhinebeck episode all about my Rhinebeck sweater. Um, those of you who <laughs> are new to the channel or even if you're just long-standing watchers may be wondering why I'm having a Rhinebeck episode. You can tell that I, you know, I've got an English accent. I'm from London, UK, not Ontario. Um, <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I'm here in my living room at home because I am hashtag not going to Rhinebeck. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, I'm not going to, to Rhinebeck, but um, I have a feeling that maybe some of you guys might be going to Rhinebeck, but also maybe you, some of you won't be. Um, so I thought I'd just record a Rhinebeck episode anyway, just as if I was, and just pretend along. Um, okay, so in this episode, obviously we're going to be chatting about Rhinebeck, Rhinebeck sweater. There's loads of updates going on about the Crimson Whip Along um, which is currently happening and a big update about Crimson Whip Along prizes too, which is really exciting. So it's very much like a knitting project heavy episode. And um, you know, I've got my got my cup of tea because we are very much into autumn now that it is October. I spent most of September being in complete denial um, about the change of seasons. I guess I was hoping for some kind of Indian summer, which we did have, you know, it was really sunny and bright um, in the mornings and a little bit warm in the afternoons, but evenings were very, very chilly. So, you know, it's been full on knitwear here at home ever since then. And yeah, I'm gonna stop uh, blathering on and I'm just gonna start talking about my knitting projects. So yeah, I'll talk about what I've been working on, big update about the Crimson Whip Along, and then in conversational threads at the end of this episode, we'll get into the details about the Rhinebeck sweater. So whether or not you are at Rhinebeck and you're, you know, at a knitting meetup or you're chilling out in your accommodation and you've, you know, popped on a video to watch as, you know, a bit of a knitterly background, or if you're not going to Rhinebeck and you've got all of the FOMO, fear of missing out or if you just don't really care um, <laughs> this episode is for all the knitters so what is in my knitting basket my knitting basket is currently really loaded up and it's looking pretty full uh, and in fact it's so big that it's actually splurged out over here so I'm gonna get to this one in a moment but let's start with what I've been working on which is very diligently continuing work on my whips my works in progress for the hashtag crimson whip along which has been proving really, really successful over on Ravelry and I think a little bit on Instagram as well. But um, as most of you know, I've been on a bit of a social media break um, in terms of apps and just trying to focus, you know, on the here and now a little bit more. I've been enjoying following the discussions on Ravelry actually because it's nice to have, you know, it's, it's quite an old fashioned um, platform, the forum, the internet forum, you know, it, it is a little bit dated, but what it has the advantage of is, you know, really bringing in other voices and really facilitating conversation um, in a kind of measured way between different people that you can actually keep up with and follow follow along um, which doesn't work out so well um, on Instagram and you know even on YouTube you know people can have conversations but it's a little bit more back and forth back and forth whereas on the forums like you can really you can really read through the threads or or not <laughs> but anyway crimson whip along so I picked up my caterpillar jumper which is a scrap and leftover project um, using scraps and leftovers you know says what it it is what what it is um, <laughs> and it's um, inspired by a K facet design called Caterpillar in a very old issue of Rowan Knitting Magazine that's over 10 years old um, and I and I mean that it's inspired because as usual my gauge is completely different so you know I might normally be the first or second sizes you know depending on the measurements you know XS or S um, but here I'm knitting like L or XL I, I don't even know um, because it's all about the gauge and the fit. Um, 
So yeah, I'm using yarn from my stash that's held double. There's, you know, held double four ply and DK. Um, sometimes I've held like a thicker yarn, like maybe a worsted yarn with a four ply in order to prolong the life of the colours. You can see this orange stripe is extremely bright here and, and you know, will end up being on my midriff, but I'm quite confident that after a few washes actually, the brightness will dull down a little bit. As you can see, I've just steamrolled up the, um, probably the back of this. I'm probably going to use this as the back and then for the front now that I've you know had a go at knitting up um, part of the garment and know what the proportions with the stripes are going to be like a little bit more. I can be a bit more measured and careful for the front and place you know the stripe colours exactly where I want them to fit. So I've got this back, I'm kind of tucking myself in my knitting, um, one sleeve and two sleeves <laughs> going on <laughs> and it's really, it's really a bit crazy to be honest with you, but I kind of love it. I kind of love it. And I think that I'm going to get a lot of wear out of this as an at home garment because it will be just throw on. It's going to be pretty long down, you know, to my pelvis. And yeah, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm really enjoying working on it, even though it's so crazy. I'm trying to get a lot of continuity with the um, dark pink colour, which is leftovers from this Aureus jumper that I'm wearing that you will recall from number one, first episode of the Crimson Stitchery, because I sewed it up right at the beginning of the year after spending like six months of the previous year knitting it very, very slowly in pieces. So I'm delighted to say that whip has been happening. Whip is happening. <laughs> um, yeah, I've, I'm feeling really um, energetic because I've, I've drunk a lot of caffeine and I've actually gone swimming this morning. So, you know, when you get out of the swimming pool and you're just like, oh, you know, life, I have energy. That's how I feel. And now I'm talking about knitting. <laughs> so all of that, you know, spurred on energy is just coming out. Um, in the Rhinebeck episode, why not? So I've been working on that and then I've put a few more rows on this naughty orange cast on that I wasn't really meant to cast on but I just wanted to, um, which is my warm weather knit. Um, just a few more rows up the body here and a bit of lace starting on the yoke. So I think the reason that I stopped this is because I have to think. This has been my habit over the last year. Whenever I've got to a part of a project where I've had to think and use my brain, um, I have slowed down significantly. Um, so this pattern is, uh, I think it's Morganite, it's from a back issue of Pom Pom magazine. And I am knitting it out of a cotton, silk and linen Portuguese yarn. And I've done loads of alterations like other pockets and knit different sizes like I just mentioned. I do that all the time. Um, if you're interested, I, I might consider making maybe like a demonstration or a talk through about how I swatch and alter gauges. So if that's something that you're interested in, please let me know. Um, I really enjoy making tutorial and demonstration videos actually. Um, I have got a tutorials playlist here on YouTube that is, is small but it is growing. Um, they take quite a lot longer than these kind of vlog talk show episodes where I just sit down and blather on. But I like having a space where I talk about technique in depth very specifically. Um, unfortunately, those type of videos get a lot less views than the vlogs, um, which is a shame. You know, I'd, I'd love it if they were a bit more searchable. And I guess the videos within the playlist, you know, they are very, very specific about particular topics and particular problems that you're looking to solve. But actually, there's a lot of information that I that I give out when I talk through technique. And that's the feedback that I've got from comments as well. So anyway, do check out the tutorials playlist if you want something extra to watch. Um, but yeah, what was I saying? that, you know, this year I've basically had to knit things that are mindless, that are stocking stitch, stocking it. I can just about manage a bit of shaping and a bit of counting. And I think that's for various reasons as I think back over the year. Um, I'm a postgraduate student, I'm doing a PhD, and I had a really big year this year because I had my upgrade exam, um, which has got different names at different institutions, you know, some people call it a probationary review, at my uni it's actually called a confirmation, a PhD confirmation, which I really dislike because, um, I, I don't know, for, for me confirmation is like a Catholic ritual, I think, um, so I'm really confused as to why that, that term, <laughs> yeah, anyway, it's, it's got different names, but I had the upgrade, which was basically an exam that was a very, very big deal, um, and I passed, I passed with flying colours, I had fantastic feedback from my examiners, um, so yeah, that, what that means for people um, that haven't done PhDs is basically you start your PhD studies and then halfway through they decide whether or not 
the project is going to be worthy of being a PhD so it's sort of, it's an assessment halfway through to make sure that you're on track and also that the project is viable that you can do it you know that you can physically get it done um, and also that it's like intellectually viable um, too so it's it's, it's a big deal um, at least it, it was for me so yeah I passed that and then I did uh, a total of five conference presentations <laughs> um, over the year which is a lot it is a lot um, and I kind of didn't realize how exhausted I was from all of that because you know it involves travel and so on but I wasn't actually doing any first-hand research for a good you know a good chunk of time and I felt was constantly feeling guilty um, which is the theme of, of being a PhD student too constantly being guilty um, so yeah, I think what that translates into is just like watching a lot of TV in my downtime and just knitting stocking it, knitting stocking it, um, which has kind of kept me sane. To be honest with you, I'm I'm really grateful. I mean, it's definitely a form of procrastination, <laughs> um, but it's just been something that I've needed to unwind because. Um, I am also a musician. That's actually, you know, one of one of my passions in life. It's it's music. For me, knitting is something that I love to do and I always do. And it's a big part of my identity. And I just do it all of the time and I don't really think about it. But music is something that I'm actively like really passionate about. But I've I've even hardly been playing any music and I think it's just because it's too stimulating. Like there's too much to think about. I can't, you know, and I have and I've just needed, you know, things to calm down with. So I think that, that raises a great point actually about how craft serves very very differing and varied purposes in our lives and also how craft and making you know the purpose of it changes as we go through different life stages um, different events happen we're, we're different ages um, this is a kind of topic that I normally say for the end at, at conversational threads but like I said this episode is a little bit of a you know mishmash and a little bit of a special <laughs> um, and I'm not sticking straight to format but um, yeah I would love to hear your thoughts actually on that have you found that too um, do you find that your approach to whatever craft it is that you you know enjoy this podcast for knitting sewing mending you know whatever of baking I don't know <laughs> um, do you find that that changes through time and you know how how has it changed for you because you know at the moment for me it seems to be stocking it stocking it stocking stitch stockings stockings <laughs> anyway so yeah that's this orange one and I'm pleased that I put a few rows on it actually um, it's a shame that I haven't done more but that's literally just because I've been knitting other things. And another other thing that I've been knitting on my whip list is in this little bag and it's the um, coral socks that I'm making for my friend. This is a second pair of socks using two leftover yarns, one, two, both in different um, peachy shades of coral and I already made one set as a gift um, and now I'm knitting using the leftover balls. So in total that will have been two um, hanks of hand dyed sock yarn that was not cheap obviously and I've actually managed to make three pairs of socks out of it. One one for me and two as gifts so actually you know the cost per sock I guess is reducing significantly um, and it's just it's a really nice thing to give a gift that is so special that is you know not only that you've knitted it but it's also this hand dyed yarn because I've got a feeling that maybe for the gifts they might you know keep them as like bed socks or special occasion socks I've got a feeling that they probably won't just wear them out you know hiking I mean maybe they will and that's up to them but um it's just like another layer of, of specialness to be able to give away and nice that I can squeeze extra out of these you know beautifully dyed and um you know precious artisanal yarns so that's fabulous um I finished this sock a couple of days ago and I didn't have a yarn needle with me at the time um I think I was on public transport and I didn't want to stop knitting because I had the rest of my train journey to complete and I wanted the needles. So what I ended up doing was um, I knitted the toe until it was much pointier, and so I just continued decreasing and then in the end I think I only had eight stitches so I just broke the yarn and it was easy to use the knitting needles to thread the yarn through the live stitches and fasten it off. 
So um, that was a creative solution to involve grafting. Um, and it's very pointy, but um, my friend has got, you can probably tell, pretty tiny, dainty feet. So she hasn't got like blocky, wide, horrible old flat feet like me. She's got lovely, dainty, little tiny feet. So um, I think the pointy toe, you know, it kind, it kind of just fits in um, with the daintiness of this peach hand knitted sock. So that was that. So three projects with a little bit more work on for the Crimson Knit Along, um, which brings me really nicely to this project here. So I've recently been in touch with Wool and the Gang, a really exciting and contemporary hand knitting brand um, who predominantly produce kits for beginners and improvers, you know, beginners to intermediate knitters, and they also sell yarn separately on its own. And I've been intrigued by Wool and the Gang for ages um, because I found that a lot of their kits are on the one hand, they're very fashion forward and a lot of their colours seem very, you know, very now, very fashion led and just, just fun. And also the kind of cuts and styles that they have within their kits, they're somewhat basic, although I've just said that they're very fashion-y, they're at the same time quite basic and I think they're very, very wearable and would appeal to a lot of people. Um, and I think that that's a really fun and interesting combination to kind of touch upon fashion and touch upon hand knit. Um, and yeah, so I've been intrigued by them for a while and they've got a fantastic and interactive website too with loads of resources for beginner knitters. So they have recently launched the Cozy Collection on Wool and the Gang's website and I'm going to put a link to that down below here in the show notes on YouTube. So please do go over there, click on it, have a look and then come back. Okay, hope that you're back again. Um, yeah, have a look and check it out because um, the Cozy Collection has got a lot of neutral colours in it and just a lot of kind of soft, autumnal and I would say practical colours that are quite easy to integrate into your wardrobe. So like I say, I've been intrigued by their kits for a while and I was so excited when they offered to send me one to test out for the Crimson Whippelong. So I was really intrigued by Will and the Gown because they produce these kits where they've basically got everything that you need to make the sweater inside the package, which I think is really great um, because you don't need to worry about, you know, getting hold of extra bits of equipment and so on and so forth. And I am obviously not a beginner knitter, but I thought that this was a great opportunity to try out something new. And actually what is new for me at the moment is knitting in like a super bulky yarn. So for me, it was really exciting to be able to try out something that I wouldn't ever normally pick. I wouldn't normally pick a super bulky yarn. I would normally pick a DK or a four ply, but it's just so fun to be able to just try it out. If you've clicked over onto the Cozy Collection, you'll have noticed that Will and the Gang have got two models with different body shapes um, in order to model the collection, um, one of whom is pictured here. Um, and I think that that's really good because it's showing that their products are very user focused and user centered. And that element really has come through into everything. So the kits are not um, cheap, but actually I think that in terms of the value for money, it's actually really high. And you can really tell that a lot of thought and planning has gone into how you're going to actually use the kit. So when I was younger, I used to like go to craft shops and see like a sewing kit to make a stuffed toy, like a teddy bear or like a knitting kit to make a toy or whatever. And I'd always want to buy it. And you know, people would give me kits like that for Christmas um, and birthdays because they knew that even as a child, I loved to make things. And I just have so many terrible memories of getting those kits home opening up the packaging and just like seeing some fluff and a bit of fabric or just like a bit of yarn and and some needles and like hardly any guidance about how to make what was in the picture and that is definitely not the case here you know they've really thought in great detail about how everything's going to be used in order to create a great sweater so after all of their internet discussions that have been going on about sizing, size inclusivity, size diversity, I think it's quite refreshing actually that they have um, included models of different sizes on their website so that you can get an idea maybe as to how the garment will fit you. And the kit comes in six sizes, but it's knit with quite a lot of positive ease, like I would say nearly 10 inches, um, which for me is a little bit much. I personally don't like so much positive ease. Um, so in my opinion, that allows even more flexibility within the sizing um, if you are happy with different types of fit. So um, let's talk about 
this swatch. Um, I chose the Amanda sweater um, and I've gone for the shade Mineral Pink, which is a new colour um, for the Cozy collection. And it's actually the same colour as what is in their catalogue images. And um, the reason that I chose this sweater was because it's super bulky. I would never normally go out and purchase this yarn. So it was just such a fun opportunity to try something new. Um, also, the sweater is knit in moss stitch. And I think that moss stitch in super bulky yarn is such a cool effect. I absolutely love the texture and it's really simple so for me even as what I would consider myself to be a very experienced knitter um, maybe even an advanced knitter although I tend to pick simpler techniques personally that's what I enjoy doing um, actually the um, styles and like the products that are offered by Will and the Gang are still really appealing to me so yeah I would definitely recommend this for kind of beginner and improver knitters um, lots of people have written to me in the past asking what skills do they need to do to go from um, you know like a scarf or a hat to a sweater and I think products like this are really good for um, kind of bridging the gap and allowing you something to practice on because this heavier weight yarn means that your project is not going to take that long and actually my first sweater was knit in oh it was knit in super bulky yarn at 12 stitches per four inch or 10 centimeter gauge and for this sweater the pattern is written for eight stitches per four inch so it allows you plenty of room to practice and you'll you know you will see your project grow actually in front of your eyes the other way that i think well in the gang kits could be really lovely is if you are knitting as a gift um and if you want to you know make sweaters for um, in this case uh, female relatives <laughs> your daughter your sister your niece for example you know because I think that the styles are very fresh and contemporary and also that the projects are quite fast to work on um, for me this this could be ideal gift knitting so I might keep this for myself or I might give it to my sister time will tell Here's the swatch that I knitted. So yeah, it's in mineral pink, the new colour. Um, and pale pink can be a bit of a questionable colour on my olive skin tone, but I think that I can get away with it. And I think it will be a nice kind of sugar plum fairy kind of <laughs> Christmas jumper. Um, I hope that you can see in the image that the yarn itself, it's a single um, ply, you know, single spun very very thick and actually it's not a flat colour there's loads of different colours um, within the yarn so looking at it I can see like indigo I can see tangerine I can see a, a deeper shade of coral a lighter shade of pink um, which means that it's really lovely to look at up close as well as you know from far away um, the fabrics just got a lot of depth to it in terms of the colour as well as the texture you know because of the moss stitch it's got all of the lovely shadow work um it's very 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 soft very soft um my partner was stroking it and said you know I wish that all of my garments were this soft so again this is great for beginners and also for gifts because of that um I haven't blocked or steamed the swatch yet I think that it might have a tendency to grow because of it being single ply um so that's something to bear in mind that you might want to lightly steam and not wet block your project you have the option in this kit um to ask for whether it comes with needles or not so I did ask for needles because I don't own 15 mil needles but um what I will say is that they are straight needles and they are made of wood um, the wood is actually really nice to knit with the points are quite sharp and it's nice and glossy you know the varnish on it um, but some people might prefer to use circular needles in which case you you know you can just get your own needles um, but the other thing that I really like about this kit is that it is sent with minimal plastic um, Go, you know reducing plastic is something that I've alluded to a little bit on this channel but I haven't talk, talked about in depth and that is for several reasons the main one being that I think that it's really really difficult to reduce plastic consumption as a consumer and that actually it needs to come from the top down it needs to come from industry and sort of in order to get companies and you know manufacturers to reduce plastic actually it's gonna I think it has to be in legislation so I think it's actually a very you know reliant on being top down however as consumers you know you want to feel like you're doing something too and obviously you can make contributions it's just they're going to be more small scale so I just want to flag that all of the packaging apart from one tiny window here is made of cardboard so it's recyclable which I just think is absolutely brilliant because there are so many knitting and craft products that are just immediately packaged in plastic so 
actually, you know, well done, well done the can. <laughs> That's another reason why I feel like this is a really great product and why I'm really glad to be trying it out and, you know, doing this in-depth review and sharing my process with you guys on the Crimson Stitchery. Um, so yeah, just to kind of underscore their beginner friendly nature, there's diagrams of how to knit on the back of the needles and ooh, I'll show you the ball of yarn. So the kit comes with the needles, the yarn, or the needles are optional, and the instructions and a yarn needle. And then, here we go, here's a bit of knitting. So I've passed on for the ribbing of the bottom of the sweater already. Um, the funny thing was that when I was knitting the swatch using 15 millimeter needles, like, you know, it's like holding a walking stick, <laughs> my partner just burst out laughing and he said to me, oh, I've never seen you knit so slow. <laughs> and that is something to bear in mind because, you know, you're, you're working with such large equipment when you're just used to doing like fingering weight yarns, you know, it's, you can be much more dexterous. This is different and that's just that. I think it is very, very satisfying to watch the knitting physically grow in front of your eyes. That's very motivating. And at the end of the day, even though my movements are much slower, actually the yarn is so thick and the gauge is so, you know, big that it's super fast anyway. So I wouldn't get discouraged by, you know, the physical speed because actually you're knitting at such a larger scale. The last thing that I want to bring up about this kit is the pattern, which comes in a little tiny booklet. And again, it's really user-centered. I think even the fact that it's in this little booklet, I mean, arguably some people might find the print a bit small, I guess, um, but everything is just really, really clear. And also things like the schematics, you know, there, there are multiple schematics that are arranged by size, so you don't have to worry about, you know, tracing through and reading off your size number, um, which can be a bit confusing when you've got like, you know, many, many numbers one after another. So yeah, and then there's the instructions that are, that are really clear. And then there's also the techniques in depth that you need to do. And at the end of the booklet, there's even little measuring guides in inches and centimeters in case you don't have a tape measure to hand. So honestly, overall, I think that this is a really great product. Um, I'm not gonna lie, it's, it's not cheap. This kit retails at over 100 pounds, depending on which size that you purchase. Um, but I am gonna say that any super bulky project that you, that you do um, is, is, is always a little bit more costly because basically the thinner the yarn is, the cheaper it is. And I feel really grateful that Will and the Gang have sent me this kit to review and try out. Um, I feel very confident about making it during the whip along. You know, I, I feel like it's something that I, I've cast on and I will cast on during the time and probably not affect the rest of my whips too much. So I'll continue to let you know um, how this is getting along and obviously talk about how it wears, how it holds up, my ensuing thoughts. But really excitingly, Will and the Gang are also offering two prizes for the Crimson Whip Along. Um, they have very, very kindly agreed to give away two kits from the Cozy Collection. Um, their company shipping restrictions apply. Um, but how cool is that? So actually, two of you guys have the opportunity to win a kit. Um, I don't know why I feel jealous of you, even though I've already got one, but anyway. Um, <laughs> there are gonna be two strand to the giveaway prizes and the giveaway for the whip along is gonna happen on Ravelry. So using random number generator, I will draw names from the chatter thread and also from the finished objects thread. Now, the chatter thread is very active and very friendly and that is absolutely wonderful, so if you, you know, even if you just try and enter the Crimson Whip Along, even if you just try and get your whips down, you're gonna have a chance of winning a prize, which is really nice. Um, just to recap, the Crimson Whip Along is very, very low key. You can enter at any time. All you have to do is post a list of your current whips, all of your, all of your whips, and you have to commit to finishing 50%. If you cast on more projects, you have added more to your list, so you're gonna to have to finish a few more in order to have got, you know, half half of your whips done. The whip along runs until the 2nd of January, 2020, and I am not going to be extending it because um, the, the whole point is just that we have this kind of slightly frenzied, uh, efficient period of time where we crack on with our projects. So 
The first prize will be drawn from the chatter thread and there will also be a separate finished objects thread which I will open on the 1st of January, so you know, just a day before the deadline, um, just in case people want to use their New Year's Day. Um, it's a public holiday in a lot of places, you know, in case you want to use that downtime to get going on posting your finished objects. Um, and that's going to run for uh, probably about 10 days, um, during which, you know, you will post like a pile or a stack or a, you know, you wearing all of your whips. I don't know, just you, you'll make a post if you've managed to finish. Um, 50% of your works in progress and so the second prize is going to be drawn from that. Um, so the way things are going at the moment, <laughs> myself included, seems to be that people keep casting things on so it's quite possible that there won't be that many entrants <laughs> into <laughs> the finished objects, you know, 50% finished objects thread. So if you want to crack on with it, you've probably got quite a high chance of winning. <laughs> Um, while we're on the subject of prizes, I also want to say thank you to everybody else who got in touch about donating prizes. So as well as the two kits, which are kind of like the grand prizes, I've also been donated PDF patterns, um, which I will split again between the chatter thread and the finished objects thread. So thank you very much to Jacqueline Salem of the Brooklyn Knit Folk podcast for offering to donate patterns. Thank you also to Melinda Yonderwoman for agreeing to donate a pattern prize. Um, and also Bani V Designs for agreeing to donate your shawl pattern prize. So thank you so much to those uh, four entities, you know, Will and the Gang, Jacqueline Salem, Melinda Yonderwoman and Bani V for offering to um, contribute to the Crimson Whip Along. That's really generous of you. Um, hopefully all of this speak about prizes has been very motivating for you guys. Don't forget to hop over to the Wool and the Gang website to check out what they have to offer and also join in on the Whip Along on Ravelry um, and Instagram using the hashtag Crimson Whip Along. So mending, I've got hardly any mending this week. The only thing I've done is sew on some buttons that had fallen off. Um, this is a wrap dress that attaches with ties and buttons. And it came off and I put it back on straight away before the button got lost, which happens quite frequently. Um, so do check out my button sewing tutorial for hot tips about sewing on buttons. It's very, very in-depth and lots of people have commented and said that it has taught them things that they, you know, didn't know before or showed them new techniques or enhanced their knowledge. Sometimes people assume that it's really easy and basic to sew on a button, but obviously there is particular techniques that you can use to have, you know, like a really successful mend that will hold up for a little bit longer. So, um, swiftly moving on to conversational threads and let's talk about Rhinebeck. So, I am uh, British. So, ever since I have, you know, discovered the online world of knitting back in the early 2000s, I've been really aware of Rhinebeck. I feel like I've always known about it, um, even as a British person. And I guess that this could ar arguably be due to the, you know, dominance of the US in the, you know, online uh, yarnosphere. <laughs> um, like when I first discovered knitting blogs, nearly all of them were written by North Americans, basically. So it kind of makes sense. In many ways, Rhinebeck feels like some kind of mecca, like some kind of pilgrimage for knitters. Like it, it's something that you do if you're a real knitter, <laughs> going, going to that kind of festival. Um, but from what I gather, it's not very easy to get there because, you know, you, you it's not that close to an airport. So it requires quite a lot of traveling. And it's not something that I have ever done um, or would plan to do, possibly. Um, I don't know, if I was in that part of North America at the right kind of time, if it was convenient, I might go, but I'm not sure if I would make that pilgrimage, um, mostly because I don't like crowds. It's as simple as that. Um, I haven't been to many music festivals either. I think I've been to like two or three um, in my life, which, you know, as a millennial, <laughs> that is, yeah, uh, that's a lot less than my peers. Um, yeah, so one of the many rituals that seem to surround Rhinebeck is the Rhinebeck sweater. And again, I've been aware of this for ages, even though it's it's not very um, British. And I think that um, 
Edinburgh Yarn Festival has been going for I think it's five years now um, and it's become quite popular although it's not running next year and there's definitely been like a kind of Edinburgh sweater thing as well um, going on there too but it's it actually seems really nice to have the idea of like something that you made specially for a certain occasion and reminds me of other things that I have made for special occasions like you know making a dress to wear to uh, someone's wedding for example or um, just a night out, you know, a, an important night out, big night out, or um, a birthday, significant birthday. Um, so yeah, there's that. Um, now knowing myself, I know that I would fail miserably <laughs> at knitting a Rhinebeck sweater, um, which is kind of what I want to talk about now. I think if I was going, what I probably would end up wearing is this cardigan this lovely cardigan um, in this bright pink, I guess it kind of stands out from the crowd, it's got a bit of lace detailing. But when I think about it, all of the making that I've done for a deadline, it's always been sewing actually, I, I've i never knitted for a deadline. Um, I don't know, I just I kind of assumed that I just wouldn't get it done. <laughs> um, oh, I guess that's not true, I guess I've, I've knitted for Christmas, um, you know, up to Christmas Eve and I've knitted, you know, for birthday presents and you know been sewing in the ends on the train on the way to the birthday party and stuff like that so yeah <laughs> I'm not sure how how I would fare um saying that yeah I think that this would probably be quite a nice Rhinebeck sweater to wear it's something that I made at the start of the year so it's kind of nice to be bringing through a fond memory of a loved garment of 2019 um into a festival to show people um also it's very brightly coloured um another thing that I think would work really nice for a Rhinebeck sweater is this scrap jumper that I'm currently making and this one might actually be more realistically achieved because um, it's knit on I think six millimeter needles so I could possibly finish that quite quickly and also it's like again it's, it's colorful it's eye-catching it's bright um, I would probably hopefully be spotted in a crowd um, quick and also I love the fact that because it's a scrap jumper I can tell you um, everything that I made out of these yarns, like that was a hat for my stepdad, that was the magnolia sweater, that was this pink one, um, some things were given to me which always happened, and this green one here is a leftover chenille that's really old um, and kind of doesn't really fit in with the rest of the yarns because it's cotton and not wool, um, but I knit a jumper for my brother when he was five years old out of it, so yeah, there's lots of there's lots of history <laughs> going on in this kind of scrap project, which um, kind of looks like a scrap project, I guess, because of the striping. But I kind of feel also that it's it's got it's definitely got its own aesthetic appeal, um, inspired by Kate Facet. Am I alone in wondering if Stephen West is the uh, successor of Kate Facet? You know, like the millennial successor. Let me know what you think about that. Um, so the other thing that I think would work really well for a Rhinebeck sweater is this and like this <laughs> which is currently a swatch and a piece of ribbing like I, I feel like if I was actually going to Rhinebeck this would be <laughs> the situation that I was in like I it's, it's kind of perfect. This is what it would be. Uh, and this is also why I really wanted to talk about the Wool and the Gang kit on this episode because I feel like if you're a last minute knitter or if you're doing a last minute Christmas gift, this is something that is achievable. <laughs> So that's it from me really, um, let me know are you going to Rhinebeck and if you're not I hope that you have a very nice time knitting on your own or um, with friends or with you know the internet <laughs> and I hope that you enjoy wearing your Rhinebeck sweater slash hashtag not going to Rhinebeck um, anyway and just you know enjoying enjoying what you have if you're going I hope that you have the best time looking at loads of amazing yarns and if not work on your crimson whip along project or just go sash diving and see what you can find lying around the house or see if you have got any treasured items that need a stitch or two and a bit of mending in order to bring them um, up to scratch for the oncoming winter here in the northern hemisphere as I sign off, I want to say a big, big, massive thank you to everybody who has recently supported this podcast over on Ko-fi. Um, thank you so much. If you're not aware, if you don't know what I'm talking about, Ko-fi is a donation platform which allows you to support content creators, video makers by metaphorically and sometimes literally buying them a coffee. So it collects a small donation through PayPal. And 
yeah, I just want to say a big thank you. Um, making these videos takes a lot of time. I so appreciate all of the positive feedback, um, the enthusiasm, the support that all of you have given me. And, you know, if it is within your means to support me financially, I really, really appreciate it. Obviously, to watch any other kind of entertainment, um, you know, you have to buy a TV license or like a, a subscription, you know, to stream and stuff like that, unless you do it legally. But, um, you know, when it comes to content creators, YouTube video makers, if you're able to support us financially, it's really going straight back into the channel and allowing me to spend time and, you know, build resources in making this channel a great place and a useful and beautiful place for everyone that watches it. So a big, big thank you to everyone who has donated already. I have spent the money on a few coffees here and there, which has been really lovely. Um, but to be honest with you, I have a little bit of a bigger goal that I'd like to share with you here for my coffee donations, which is that I would really, really like to save up to buy a new camera. So previously people have supported me and the Crimson Stitchery in other goals, which are all about equipment. You helped me to buy a selfie stick and you helped me save up and buy a large um, storage hard drive for my computer, which actually allows me now to edit the videos because my computer was actually crashing and I was unable to use it for ages. So thank you so much for helping me meet these goals. The next goal is a little bit bigger, it's a new camera. And the reason for that is, you might think that, you know, it's it's no problem that I can continue as I am, but I'm actually filming the Crimson Stitch shoot on a borrowed camera that's really excellent for point and shoot. You know, it's great for taking photos, you can put all sorts of different lenses on it and so forth. Um, but it's not been designed for recording videos. I can record videos on it, but basically every 20 minutes the video times out um, and the camera dies and um, it's a bit of a palaver and it's quite inconvenient. It also means that when I'm filming outside on the go, such as the interview that I recently filmed with Shara Shepherd, the costume knitter, um, it's, it's quite physically difficult to do because my camera keeps dying and it's a little bit embarrassing to be honest with you. I do feel a little bit amateur, which is, you know, it is what I am, but I would just love to be able to purchase a new camera which has got much better video making facilities so that I can make better videos um, for the channel and that are freely accessible for everybody to watch. So that is my goal. It is quite large. Um, I haven't said a specific model of camera and that's because I'm aware that it is you know, the winter is coming and there are a lot of sales that happen in the winter. So um, I've set an amount as a budget, which I think is quite realistic um, because, you know, there are cameras that cost more, there are cameras that let, cost less, but, you know, there's different qualities that are available. So I, I you know, I wouldn't want to say, oh, I'm going to buy this camera and then in the end I, I um, get something totally, totally different. So when the time is right, you know, I will do the research and make the best choice then. Um, and hopefully, you know, things will be on sale, <laughs> basically, is what I'm getting at. So um, if you are able to contribute to my goal, um, I would be most grateful. Honestly, I would be so grateful because it's not something that I can afford on my own, off, off my own back. Um, but making videos and sharing my knowledge and connecting with you guys and building up this community through the Crimson Stitchery has become so important to me and uh, you guys have told me that it's been very valuable for you as well. Um, so, you know, thank you to everybody who's supported me in the past. Um, and, you know, if you're interested in, in contributing to the goal, the links are down below here in the show notes. That's all that there is from me today. I hope that you have enjoyed this rather chatty episode of the Crimson Stitchery. Um, I am going to take next week off, so there is not going to be a video coming out next week. But do hit subscribe and, you know, click on the bell icon here on YouTube if you want to receive notifications about new videos. And finally, don't forget to subscribe to my newsletter, Postcards from the Crimson Stitchery, which comes out once a month, which is full of recommendations, updates and photographs from around me, my travels and the rest of my life. Thanks so much for joining and happy knitting. Take care.